Today I'm going to show you how to patch both a regular patch and a security patch on a cohesity cluster in 6.6. The process is a little bit different in 6.8.1 and later, but today is going to be about 6.6. First thing you need to do, do you need to patch your cluster? Now how would you determine that? So if you go from the main dashboard, if you go to settings and summary, this gives you some information about your cluster itself. It gives you a cluster ID. But if you look at the software line, it'll give you the version of the Cohesity cluster. Notice it goes right next to the hardware line, which is this is a virtual edition multi node cluster in this case. We don't see the word patch. That means we haven't actually applied a patch to this cluster yet. So, what we need to do is go to the mycohesity.com, go to the support panel, and look to see is there a patch that applies. And also possibly do we want to upgrade the cluster as well? There's two possibilities here, but we're going to talk more about patching today. So now I'm at the my.cohesity.com. We'll need to log in with your email account and password, and then we're going to click on this middle panel to support. All right, so now I'm logged in. Now I'm going to click on launch support. And on the bottom left-hand side, we're going to click on download Cohesity software. This is where both software upgrades, ISO files, and software patches are located. And depending on your internet speed, it will determine how long it takes to load. Mine's not the best, so this is kind of what we have. So we're looking at a 6.6 released here. So update six is the latest. So technically from my lab cluster, I could update it from update five to update six. And we would use this update package. You can use that update package, whether it's a physical, virtual, or cloud cluster, single node, multi-node, it doesn't matter. We have one upgrade package. Same thing if you're doing an installation, you can use that ISO to download the and do an install on no matter which hardware you're going to use. So we're going to click under the patches icon here. So we have several different versions listed. So we have a lot of releases listed here from 681 all the way down to 651. So this is a very recent release as of January 30th. This recording is on February. First, so we have a regular patch called P30 and also one called P30S1, which is a security level patch. I used to say on here to tell you that hey, if you're going to apply a security patch, it's also going to do a reboot. It's actually a two step process you apply the regular patch and then the security patch. So, what I changed in this recent patch is before you would have to apply the regular patch and then in addition apply the security patch. Now, if you download the security patch and kick off the patch, process, it will actually apply both in one go. The info file just lets you know on a security patch the nodes will reboot. If you apply the regular patch, the nodes do not reboot. Only the services will restart. So I have a couple links here. What's been fixed in said issue. And you can look at previous issues as you want and also the instructions. So there's a different instruction set for the regular patch. Always downloaded this uh, HTML file here. In 6.6, this is the one thing I wanted to articulate to everyone. In 6.6, you have to download a patch and copy it to one node. Only one node in the cluster. Yes, you, we'd give you the commands verbatim what you need to do. Then you extract it out using the tar xf and then use the sh or dot slash whatever you case you want to do, apply the patch. And that will apply the patch, not only in on that one node, but then across all the nodes in the cluster. And it will do it one service at a time. So for our bridge service, it'll do, let's say node one, and the bridge service on node one, and then it'll move on to node two and three. So it'll patch that same service across all the nodes one at a time, so there isn't any downtime, and then it'll move on to the next node. But that's all you see on a regular patch. And also to know in 681, you can use the UI to do the patch. So if we look similarly to the security patch, so it does have some stuff in here about if you're in D and D mode, you know, upgrade the cluster to update six before doing the patch. It has a couple commands to run ahead of time before you download the patch. But you're still starting with the download the S1 patch. Same thing, you copy it over, you apply it, and what has changed very recently is now 
We used to have where we would apply a second patch called the base OS patch, but now they have integrated this as of this release. This is brand new to me as well. And this is where you can apply it once and it's gonna automatically apply the patch. So there was kind of two patches. They have a regular patch and a security patch. Now they have integrated it both into one package. And so you only have to apply it once and it'll apply both the base and the security because that's what we were downloading, it's the security patch. So let's go back and actually, let's just download this patch. Now that we've downloaded the patch, next step is per the instructions, we need to copy over the patch to any node in the cluster in the home cohesity data directory. So I'm on Linux, so I'm just gonna use SCP. Now we're, we do have the, uh, so you want to use a support account. So we're going to use support at in a node IP. So in my case, it's dot 91 always seems to get everything. And the support account, if you're not aware, is the only account you can use to like SCP or SSH into a node. If you're on Windows doing a patching, you can use WinSCP as a free online utility. And now it's copying over, and then we'll need to SSH into the node to actually extract this TarGZ file and then actually kick off the patching process. Now if you look at the instructions, it does have you run a utility called hc underscore cli commands. So we'll run those first. Technically, it wants you to do that before you copy it over, but now everything's okay on this cluster, it's just a test cluster anyways. HC CLI run dash C K pre-upgrade. So this is on a virtual node cluster, just so you're aware. So as it shows here, we can look at HC, we can use HC CLI show in a particular node, or we could do a show all. We did have one failure. I had to bring this cluster out of a, state, a save state, so there's probably some lingering, lingering issues. So what's really important here is everything is showing its past. And so this gives us a summary of all the checks per node. So that's the important thing. Everything's passed, it looks like it's good. I wanna log into our command shell, the iris underscore CLI, and do a basic cluster status. So I'll type the word cluster, status, so the output of this command is going to go through every node in your cluster, whether it's a four node or a 32 node, it will be a lot longer displaying a 32 node. <clears throat> but you'll see the IP address, the node ID, and the version each node is on, what is the state of the cluster. I just do that as a sanity check just to make sure all the services are up and running that I would expect. Which it, ideally, if your cluster's in production, you shouldn't have any services that are missing, but just in case. So let's exit out of that. Now we are ready to kick off the patch. I like to go into the directory itself. So you'll see we only have read write at the very top. So we're looking at this file here and then for the instructions to do a tar xf. I do it this way. Now it, it has you also do the apply patch. So we'll try it this way. I just typically don't do it this way, but I typically just do the apply the tar against the tar gz file and then I have the apply patch and I just run it afterwards, but we'll do it this way just to see. So if we do a list now we should see we see the apply patch here. If I do a dot slash, you can do sh like they have there, but I'm used to doing a dot slash. 
Now for my support account, I do have sudo access enabled. And I would probably just recommend having it enabled just to uh, avoid issues and then you can disable it after this is done. So now this is gonna go through node by node and apply uh, the patching to everything. Now we've made it all the way to G, so oh, still waiting. And it keeps going and going just like the Energizer Bunny. Through the magic of video editing, we have skipped forwarded to the end. You'll notice the last couple services, Yoda and Nexus, have completed. This completes patch level one, as I call it. Now the second patch, because we downloaded the security patch, is kicking off. And this is going to put the Linux CVE security patches to each node. Again, it will be one node at a time, and it will reboot one node at a time, as you'll see in the logs. So let's fast forward to the end where we see the patch has been applied successfully and you see a message here, reboot is required. So the script will kick off the node reboot and the script will then continue to check to make sure the node is back up and online before it moves on to the next node. So we see a couple of lines, reachable after reboot, that just means it's on the network waiting for the services to start and then you see another line waiting 60 seconds which will continue to go every 60 seconds until all the services are back online for that node which would mean the patch is complete on that node and then it will move on to the next node. So now we see a couple of checks here. Reachable after reboot, cohesive services are running, node reboot complete. Now we'll then progress forward and move on to the second node. Now we see here from the messages that we're starting the installing base OS packages, the security packages is on node two. couple things I wanted to point out that on node 2 is going through the same process It's reachable after the reboot it's waiting for the services to come online I was waiting for one particular service the Apollo to come online because that hasn't started yet so it is intelligent enough to check every individual service not just one service or two and if you don't know the Apollo service is it responsible for our background processes such as garbage collection balancing data throughout the cluster In node 2, the reboot has completed and it's getting ready to move on to node 3. And what wouldn't be fun without having a little meme here, so brace yourselves, node 3 is patching now. So node 3 is triggering a reboot. It's technically node 1, that was the node that we SSH'd in to kick off the patching process. That's why the SSH session was terminated. So we'll give this a few minutes and then we'll go back and uh, verify that the patching has been applied successfully. Okay, so patch P30S1 has been applied to the cluster. If you're not sure, you can go for the main dashboard, settings, and summary to see this. And just so you're aware, anytime a new node was added to the cluster, the, this patch would automatically be applied to those new nodes. Same thing if you were to add new nodes to the cluster, the software could be upgraded or downgraded automatically. The cluster does have alerts to check in case any nodes do have a mixed version of the binaries to make sure everything's on the same page. Okay, so now we've SSH into a node. So we're going to go into the, we're going to CD into the slash home, slash cohesic, slash data, slash patches with an ES. There's another directory called patch. And this is going to give us the log files that we want to look at to review the patching process. I'm going to issue an ls command to list the file. Files that really only need to pay attention to 660D P30 as well as the patch that we apply to have both the regular patch and the security That log file actually will be the patch underscore history.json file, and there's 
also a base OS patch that's just showing the security part of the process. So you can see the difference between the three files. I want to use the Linux command plus. And this goes service by service what's been applied on the cluster, what was before. So it gives you a history. This was a new cluster, so there wasn't really much of a history here. You can see we were on 660D update 5, and then we put a patch for update 6 P30. And at the very end, if you want to get out of that, just hit the Q to quit. So next, we're going to look at the base OS patch. Now this is at the part of the process where it's just referring to the security CVE patches. Let's see where it's copying from node 91, because that's the original node we copied the patch to and kicked off the patching process from. And you'll see the similar information that we showed earlier in the video. So I'm not gonna go through it quickly. Basically, that it applied to patch, the node reboots, checks to make sure the node is online, all the services are, are online before it moves on. And at the very end, where we triggered, it says triggering reboot. That's when we lost our SSH session from earlier in the video. I'm going to hit Q to quit again. Now we're going to look at the very top file. This has changed, so this actually has both the regular patch and the security patches in this log file now where it did not previously until this re recent release. So we see with the different services starting with alerts and kind of go in alphabetical order. And yes, as, as new re releases come out, we do add more services. So now, that shows us the Yoda and Nexus at the very end. And now it shows the file that was created in the path in case you had forgotten. And now we're looking at the CVE patches. It gives you some information about it. It goes through then the same log file that we just looked at from the other file. It's all in one log file. So in the future, if I was curious to see, make sure that everything was correct from my side, and I wanted to look deeper into the log file. So this is a probably the only file I would need to use in the future. We see an error at the bottom here, and that to me is just something because there was not a lock file because it was the last node, the lock was removed at, at that point. This is the Cohesity patching process. It showed you a regular patch and a security patch, which is now combined into one file. It actually does both in one go, rather than having to do two separate commands to kick off each process. I hope this was informative, and thank you for watching.